All right, click the links for Odyssey Bitch You Join Channel, become a member, support channel, coffee, the verse, have links, telegram. Okay, so if you've been following this Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing, there's a, an issue with this concept of a blank spot on the map where you feel, even if you're, you know, it's not a left or right issue, Johnny Depp is, you know, obviously on the left. It's just an issue of someone who's he's being abused um, and being uh, maltreated, but also how he's been treated in the media. Where it feels, I mean, it's obviously, obviously it's one-sided. Obviously, there's a lot of misandry going on. And even the concept of, like, why there's a blank spot in the media of the disparate treatment between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, between male and female, when the, the abuse is um, pretty clearly shown that, you know, she's done some horrific things that she literally admitted to. And there's a lot of evidence to show that she did these things, and you go, "Oh well, she she didn't get she got she didn't get punished, but he got punished." And then how the media treats the two of them, it's so radically different. You start to feel like, "Oh, this is kind of," I feel like, I feel like there's something deeper going on. And the deeper thing that I I was walking the dog, and I started to think about this, and I thought the deeper thing is, um, when you come to uh, a social, when you come to a blank spot on the map. Or there, there's a black hole where there should be something there and it's invisible. Um, then you know that there's something you probably need to to look at. And so it kind of brought me to the issue of uh, why do the globalists deflect away from toxic femininity? And actually, I was never one of those who really looked into the whole feminism um, thing so much. Um the reason there's this huge deflection away from a toxicity of um, femininity, feminism, not femininity, is because feminism, Marxism, globalism, critical theory, anything that just dis- that subverts and destroys the national order, these are all tools that they use. Feminism is a tool of the globalists. All the original feminists were globalists. You can take a look at the history of Margaret Sanger, though. Um, she actually had such a weird history that she's kind of a. She hung out with. She hung. She was a. She's in. She has her own interest in here in history to look at. To look at Margaret Sanger, and one. I mean, there are, are strange bedfellows with the, some of the people she was allied um, allied with. But then you look at the other earlier feminists, and you're like, oh, oh, these are all. These are all globalists right from the get-go. So whenever there's kind of a black hole in the logical structure of a situation, then they are pro- they're concealing something, a blank spot on the map. They're, con- they're usually going to be concealing a lie. And since the truth obviously doesn't fear investigation, those blank spots on the map must be explored and they must be filled in. So feminism has a purpose, and it's not the surface-level bullshit. And I'm sure there are a lot of well-meaning feminists, women in in high school and college, who kind of loosely jump on board this thing. And then they notice that it's, along with just that word feminism, it's... um, it it starts to lead them into this other thing like anti-capitalism. And hey, don't, hey, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people on the far left and the far right who are, who are not so fan, such fans of capitalism. But it leads you to um, Marxism and, and and globalism because it's it's not one without the other. It's not, it's like there's very few people who are very few. There's not a whole lot of right wing feminism, not in the way that the left wing understands feminism. It's a different, more um, it's a different system, more respectful system. So feminism has a purpose, purpose, and it's not um, what these girls are introduced to uh, when when they're young. Its goal is to destroy unity. It's that's kind of the globalist. That's all the concept of this. I keep coming back to for the years of this channel is globalism versus nationalism, and more more so on Odyssey and Bitchute, but. The goal of feminism, as one of the facets of this Bolshevik crystal, is to destroy uh, in-groups, in-group preferences, to destroy unity, which means destroying nationalism, destroying the tribe. So what if the patriarchy actually was the better pathway? Even to say that now blows a lot of people's minds, and it, it might be true, it probably is true. <laughs> how dare, how dare you, sir? Um... Obviously, I don't care about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard not so much. Though he he was you know he was been in some legitimately good films. Pirates of the Caribbean, for what it was, is probably one of the best films ever made. They just are a good example of toxic femininity, which is the one aspect of globalist theory that it it gets a lot of women. And it's you know if you look at the the long term consequences of it on an individual level for women, it's not good. 
it's not good where they would legitimately be happier happier with oh you want to go back to the days of arranged marriages and and let, yeah let me stop you right there and start thinking about that yourself say you're some some feminist some some 25 year old feminist chick you know who's still single and you go yeah start thinking about that for a sec like that concept of you want to go back to the days of arranged marriages honestly for a lot of people both men and women that would probably be a preferential system because when you're, you know, you're, you're, I don't know when people are supposed to get married, but young, you know, you're supposed to get married young, so you, you, you're around for the future. It's like, so by the time you're talking about getting married, like say at 18, you don't have a lot of experience to pick a spouse where literally, yeah, your parents and grandparents, if they know, you know, they, they have these community meetings for this purpose, like the Amish or the Mormons or something, like, yeah, they literally could pick a spouse better than you could. That's, I mean, that's what comes with experience. So to say, like, yeah, that is a, that might be a preferential system as a as a way to advance civilization, and it's so politically incorrect to even bring that up. But you know, you have the so like the twenty five year old is probably outraged when you say that, but then by thirty five they probably look back and go, oh, yeah, you probably you probably would have been better off. At least you would have had a couple of kids by now, and you would have been part of a of a family unit. Um, so. The, uh, the, the, like the well-meaning, well-intentioned feminists, they're not all, you know, the blue haired, um, the woman who was screaming about the patriarchy, I forget, Chanity Bicks or Hicks or something. They're not all like that. Some are well-meaning, but, um, feminists are usually the puppets for the Bolsheviks who are pulling the strings. And those people are the worst people on earth. They're the same people who are pulling a lot of strings. So the blank spot on the map is what is the counter argument to fem feminism? What is your, you know, you got to know your opponent's argument to know your own. So, like, what are the benefits of a patriarchal system? And if, if you ask me, you know, to say, hey, we'll, we'll compare and con contrast um, two systems, feminism, patriarchy, communism, uh, fascism, whatever. Yeah, as, as you, me, most reasonable people who are not ideologues could sit down and go, okay, let's compare and compare, contrast these two things. Because that simple concept of if you don't know your opponent's argument, you don't know your own. And it's brutal to have to write out your opponent's argument and to reveal flaws in your own, but it also helps you reach a deeper understanding. And ultimately, I think we have the better argument. So it's like we're the side of people who say, yeah, let's talk about this stuff. Let's have an open discussion. Um Take 10 minutes on the mic, I'll take 10 minutes on the mic, then 5-minute wrap-up, 5-minute wrap-up, whatever. We'll have an open discussion. Because we don't, the, we know the truth doesn't fear investigation. We go, hey, listen to all the videos you want, read all the books you want. And as soon as you start saying that to them, they start getting real nervous because they know that they don't have the stronger arguments, which is why they have to censor and deflect. Um, so you'd say, like, well, what are the benefits of a patriarchal system? And I assume nationalism and tribalism or patri patriarchalism, patri patriarchy. Um, I assume that's the counter to uh, globalism and feminism. So why don't they or anyone who's in the mainstream, and I, I gotta be honest, like following some of the Johnny Depp case, the guy who um, I was not a fan of because he's so such a far left wing whack job. Man, I, I, I felt something. I thought I was mostly dead inside it, but it turns out I wasn't. I actually felt something to see um, to see how he's going through this and realizing like, ooh, this is a system where men in the family courts and in sentencing guidelines, like there is, there is a lot of, and I never got into the, the MRA, the Men's Rights Association people, and I never got into any of that kind of like that whole feminist versus men's thing. It was just not what I was ever focused on. But now I look at it, I realize, oh yeah, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a structural change to treat men equally. Men, and if you want to treat part of Treating men and women equally is treating men and equal, women equally. It means that you got to end this soft bigotry of lowered expectations for women. So why don't uh, they or anyone who's in the mainstream discuss toxic feminism? Because feminism is an aspect of the Bolshevik... I don't want to show... He's got a finger. They show this wounded finger. It's like cut to the bone. <laughs> it's, it's brutal. Um, I don't know what it comes up as. 480p, probably not too sharp. Because feminism is an aspect of this Bolshevik crystal. It's a facet of the crystal. So to criticize feminism is to criticize cultural Marxism and critical theory. And Oh, we, we call, change critical theory to critical race theory. Yeah, but it's the same Frankfurt School, Saul Alinsky... Bolsheviks from you know eight, late 1800s it's, it's the same it's the same thing what's the goal to simplify it um, I can't exactly say it on YouTube it's to destroy I'll say that it's to destroy nations so these are all tools of the Bolsheviks their goal destroy the West and to try to be the only group with in-group preferences among a uh, a rootless rabble 
so I'm, I'm being careful for YouTube, but they also intend to get rid of large groups of people who coincidentally look uh, very much like you and I, your green eyed hero. So they must, uh, they must defend toxic feminism because to deconstruct the toxicity of feminism is to start to unravel this thread that Karl Marx, a.k.a. Moses Mordecai Levy, started to weave over a hundred years ago. So let me be clear. Yes, feminism is and has always been cancer. Oh, no, no, it's just the third stage or fourth stage feminism. No, 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 no. For the most part, for the most part, it's fair to say it was always, it was always a tool of the globalists from the start. Feminism was created by the globalists as a tool to destroy nations. And that's not to say, um, like, both men, men and women have different roles, but the concept of due process should apply equally to everyone. But the concept of feminism, feminism, is a, is a, a it's a cancerous concept. It's like introducing. Oh, I, I'm, I'm careful my analogies. Um, it's designed to destroy things um, over time, and you're seeing the fruit of this poison tree in current year, where you look around and. Um, this is not the the West is not the West like it it was literally in like 1950. You know, five years after after a, a war, 1950 was a better time for the for most of the West uh, than than what you're looking around and seeing now. What you're looking around and seeing now is you're seeing globalism unopposed. There was a brief time in the 50s when they tried to oppose globalism, but they just didn't fight hard hard enough. So the patriarchal system. Might have, uh, might have, you know. There's a, there's a graph of, of hotness, and craziness. But uh, someone like Johnny Depp, or anyone who's got, you know, you're a well-known actor, you got resources, you really want to um, pick your, pick your partners a little bit more careful. And, and as soon as you get the weird vibes from somebody, like they're, a, they're not playing with a full deck, like Amber Heard's not playing with a full deck. Where Johnny Depp appears to be, um, have a chemical abuse issue. But he seems all there, where Amber Heard just doesn't seem all there. Any, anyway, so a patriarchal system might have flaws, like all human systems. What do they say about American, the American Republic, Republican system? It's, I don't know, the worst system out there except for all the others. But it works to maintain structure and order. Feminism is a tool of the globalists. Giving women the vote was a huge mistake, one of many mistakes of liberal permissiveness. But we've been brainwashed so long that to say men are capable of better decisions in certain areas is absolutely haram and will get you canceled. You know, assuming there's left-wing people listening to this. There aren't. There aren't any left-wing people listening to this. And very few women listen to this. I think there's, out of like 1,500, it shows you a breakdown of uh, who's listening to your videos. There's a couple chicks who listen to this. And there is, like, feminism on the right is kind of its own discussion. Um, it's its own interesting topic. But it's not really feminism so much as... I'm not exactly sure. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's finding people, the best people for the for the position. Uh, we're on the left... I guess it's more of a merit-based egalitarian mostly. But, you know, if there's a spectrum from feminism on the one side, which is just an aspect of globalism, to the coming to the center of egalitarianism, um, where, like, a few decades ago, you asked me as a feminist, I would be, oh, yeah, I guess so. I'm sure I support it. You know, vaguely understanding something about the vote and all this. And and then, over the years, I would have come further to the right of being, oh, egalitarianism is probably... Now, I come a little bit further to the right. It's like, I'm not all the way of some patriarchal system, but it's if if you if you want it like if you dialed the West back to where it was a hundred years ago, you'd probably be in a better position. And that's not it's not to say like some Sharia law type of thing. But I mean the West. Like if you dialed the West back to, you know, nineteen whatever, a hundred years ago, you look around and you go like, Oh yeah, that structure that was in order, that was probably best for everybody. Um kind of loosely arranged marriages type of thing, um in group preferences, tribalism, um Little little pods within pods, kind of grouping. Yeah, it, it, that was a better system. To look around now, uh, it's kind of another video of, of like these lost generations. Like the X generation thought they were lost because of the liberal permissiveness of of all these theories they had in teaching. You know, people who were born, I don't know, certain 
I don't know. I don't know what the X generation is, but it's like, yeah, that was a lost generation. And then people nowadays are looking around at um, <laughs> BlackRock and Vanguard buying up <clears throat> buying up property, or, or or Bill Gates buying up farmland and, and so, like selling the United States to China, BlackRock, Vanguard, Bill Gates, and looking around like, oh. Yeah, this is really not such a hot thing. And the left-wing answer is going to be um, a left-wing direction of uh, communism, socialism. The right-wing answer is going to be the right-wing direction of national socialism. And, you know, which one is the better method and which one will ultimately take over? I kind of think you're going to see a splitting of uh, of uh, the nation, either going back to a 50, 50 states or uh, splitting into greater regions. Like, oh, my God, who will pay off all the, that debt to the bankers? Um, we could just cancel it. We can just magically wipe those zeros and ones out. Oh, you couldn't possibly. You need to be debt slaves for the rest of your life. Or not. I mean, you can really do anything you want to do as, as long as you, uh, you really want to do it and you have enough people on your side. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys all next episode.